Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade, and this is the Oh My God Show, and we are reading through the Bible. We are in the book of Genesis. Now, the Bible is broken down into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has a total of 66 books. Now, each book is divided into chapters and verses. Now, the Bible has the ability to change your life. It has changed mine. Now, we're in uh, Genesis chapter 47, Old Testament. And we saw where in uh, the previous uh, chapter, we saw where Joseph uh, finally gets the chance to see his father again after many years. And now all of his relatives have moved to live with him in Egypt. Now in uh, 47 verse 1, it says, Joseph went and told Pharaoh, my father and brothers with their flocks and herds uh, and everything they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh asked the brothers, what is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds. Um, they replied to Pharaoh, just as our fathers were. They also said to him, we have come to live here for a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now please yet let your servants settle in Goshen. Now in verse 5, Pharaoh said to Joseph, your father and your brothers have come to you and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best part of the land. Let them live in Goshen. And if you know uh, of any among them with special ability, put them in charge of my own livestock. You see, uh, they're, uh, they're basically given, you know, uh, what they call it, job opportunities at this point as well. And uh, this is only uh, showing uh, that Pharaoh has kept his word because that's exactly what he said he was going to do before they even come here. And we saw uh, Pharaoh being a leader of his word and he's very happy uh, to assist Joseph's brothers. Anyhow, uh, he's able to do so or in any way he's able to. Now in verse 7, then Joseph brought his father Jacob in the prayer and presented him before Pharaoh. After Jacob blessed Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked him, how old are you? And um, in verse 9, it says, And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are 130. My years have been few and difficult, and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my father. Now, for us nowadays, someone living to be 130 years, you know, they would be all over the media, right? And um, But in that time, people lived very long. Imagine Jacob is 130 years old, but he sees himself that he didn't really live that long. He said he has few years, but compared to people before living 900 and, um, you know, more uh, 200 and odd and so on that we even saw before in Genesis, then 130 is not that old. But again, still old, getting up in age, but see himself like, you know, um, compared to others, I am um, not that old. Now, in verse 10, then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt and gave them prosperity in the best part of the land, uh, the district of Ramesses, as Pharaoh directed. And one more point I want to make is that, um, you know, it is almost automatic uh, that uh, elderly people are revered. Now, Pharaoh is Pharaoh. He is the Pharaoh of Egypt. Not only that, he is the Pharaoh of Egypt when the other, you know, uh, countries around him were suffering. So imagine if, you know, how powerful he is, especially because of this famine. But still we see Pharaoh accepting and being blessed by Jacob being an old man. And um, that's just amazing. It's good to um, have respect uh, for elders because they also carry a grace that they can even pass on to you. But anyway, that's for another story. Now in verse 12, Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food according to the number of their children. Now in verse 13, uh, there was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. So we, um, this is no surprise to Pharaoh or Joseph and now they will have to now live off of the food reserves because even in Egypt now, while they have the reserves of the food, but the land now is also becoming um, famished. And now in verse 14, Joseph collected all the money that was found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying. And he brought it to Pharaoh's palace. 
when the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, give us food. Why should we die? Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is all gone. So Joseph has come up with a very uh, a genius idea. No, everybody's destitute. They have to come to buy food. And uh, um, as I said before, we saw Joseph basically enriching the pocket of, he's not even rich. It's like massive wealth to the point where the Canaanites are also coming to buy and other people. So they are making a lot of money from this um, situation. Now in verse 16, then bring your livestock, said Joseph. I will uh, sell you food in exchange for your livestock since your money is gone. And whenever we have a worldwide crisis, as you saw a few years back that affected so many people, including myself, and uh, we saw we are imagine. Um, who were the people earning uh, the most from this, um, you know, situation that happened a few years back. So we can imagine uh, the similar uh, situation happening when someone is in control of the food or the resources or the medicine, then those people will definitely have the power because you will automatically need them. Now in verse 17, they brought their livestock to Joseph and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, their sheep and goats their cattle and donkeys and he brought them uh, through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock so he's getting their money he's getting livestock now in 18 when that year was over they came to him the following year and said we cannot hide from our lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you uh there is nothing left for our lord except our bodies and our land so they are basically selling themselves at this point to um the Pharaoh, because they have depleted all their savings, all their money, all of their assets, which is their livestock and stuff. And now they, I mean, those things are valuable, but when there's, when you're starving, you become desperate and desperate people do desperate things. How desperate you have to be to, you know, sell you, tell you someone, take me. I mean, I mean, I don't have anything else except myself to give. Now in 19, it says, why should we perish before your eyes? We and our land as well buy us and our land in exchange for food and we with our land will be in bondage to pharaoh give us seed so that we may live and not die and that the land may not become desolate now i don't know if these people are aware that this famine or whatever was gonna last only seven years but then again i mean i don't know if they could survive seven years if they decided for example to hold out now they had the land but the land was barren so they no no the the, the grains and stuff wasn't growing um, so they had to sell that. So I don't know as well. Uh, Joseph and Pharaoh are aware of all the details of the dream and the vision God gave to them. They know that after seven years. So now what's going to happen after seven years? He's going to own all these things. And of course, the land will uh, live again, right? Now in verse 20, so Joseph brought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh. Right. Now the Egyptians and all sold their fields because the famine was too severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's. And Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. However, he did not buy the land of the priests because they received a regular allotment from Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment Pharaoh gave them. That is why they did not sell their land. Again, the priests, we saw that even in a crisis, there are some people that are untouchable. Right now, the priests, they have a, a anointing over their life and they have been given lands and stuff. And Pharaoh now basically has to feed them and their lands cannot be sold. So those priests um, get a chance to keep uh, their property and live. Again, some people are just untouchable, irrespective of what's happening. Now, in verse 23, um, Joseph said to the people, now that I have brought you and your land today for Pharaoh, he is seed for you here is seed for you so you can plant the ground but when the crop comes in a fifth give a fifth of it to pharaoh and it's like a form of tax right the other four fifths you may keep as seed for the fields and as food for yourselves and your household and your children so now um joseph is very smart a very smart businessman 
and uh, now he's basically gonna be getting what they call nowadays passive or residual income he will give them the seed and as much as they have this land they're gonna be farming and they can eat and they can enjoy and they can have money but there is always gonna be getting that passive income um into his account or the money that um in the richest man in babylon they would consider the money that is becoming a slave that is making money for you as well and um so joseph is is, is very smart as it relates to uh, being able to make money and of course can you imagine how happy and proud Pharaoh is of him because Joseph has the ability to, you know, basically bring massive wealth um, to Pharaoh. And we saw again it happened with his former boss Potiphar where once Joseph was there, blessing was uh, following. All right. In verse 25, you have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of our Lord. Now in verse 25, it says, you have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in your eyes. In the eyes of our Lord and we will be in bondage to Pharaoh you know as I said hunger and desperation is another thing they are having this conversation about selling themselves into slavery not being sold into slavery but offering themselves into slavery basically because they are hungry and desperate and at this point it doesn't seem like anybody's thinking anything long term they're thinking you know what we let us just not die let us see this food first and then think about our freedom later I guess now, in, um, so in verse 26, Joseph established it as a law concerning land in Egypt, still in force today, that a fifth of the produce belongs to Pharaoh. So it's like a fifth of whatever you earn, which is a big portion, right? It's not even like a tenth, it's a fifth, right? Belongs uh, to uh, Pharaoh. Is a tenth the same as a fifth? Would it be? No. No, no. Yeah. Guys, correct me. Did <laughs> Maybe it's not the same, but anyway, um, a fifth to me is a lot. Yeah, it's still a lot. The reason why I'm thinking of a tent because of other stuff done in the Bible. Anyway, now um, 26. So Joseph established it as a law concerning land in Egypt, still in force today. That the fifth uh, belongs, a fifth of the produce belongs. I was saying, uh, it's like a tax to the government, or a part of it would belong to them. Now it was only the land of the priest that did not become pharaohs. Again, they said it, but they're saying it again, that the land of the priests were untouchable. Now, the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. Now, Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years and the years of his life were 147. Now, when the time drew near for uh, Israel to die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand under my tie and promise uh, that you will show me kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt, but when I rest with my father, carry me out of Egypt and bury me where they are buried. He wanted to be buried in his own country, in his own place, right? I will do as you say, he said. And in verse 31, swear to me, he said, then Joseph swore to him and Israel worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. Now, uh, Jacob, like many people want to be buried in their land. And even in modern days, we see so many people travel to other countries, live in other countries. But whenever they uh, die, most times they uh, send their body or their ashes or so on back to their, their own land. And um, I don't know, it's just something that people do. And uh, we saw even with Abraham and, and so on, they, it wasn't a casual thing to be buried anywhere. And, um, you know, how you rest the soul or the body of, of a deceased loved one is also uh, still today a uh, very uh, sensitive and important uh, issue and we have some people who still will give orders how they want to be buried or what they want to be you know even the dress that they will wear or the clothes that they will wear so we see here where um jacob feels like you know his time is coming and he wants to make um sure that his son will um take him back home to bury him thank you so much now this is the end of this uh, chapter and uh, we see uh so much things happening here and um we just with let's gonna see what let's see again what's gonna happen in the next now we're almost done i'm so excited um with the book of genesis but just stay with me i know it's a very long chapter and thank you so much for your patience but there's so much to learn in the details of these stories i know many of us we are raised to hear these stories here and there a few verses here and there in church but 
it's not easy to get to hear the whole story. Sometimes too, when you know the backstory, it really helps you and also can put your own self and your own life into these scriptures and make it not just be a thing, but like something that can actually affect, um, you know, and impact us even in this modern time. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the lives of those watching, oh God. I thank you, God, that you are blessing them and keeping them, oh God, even in strange lands, oh God, that your blessings will follow them. Cover them under your blood, oh God. Take full control of their lives and destinies. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses, oh God, and bring us closer to you daily. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. I'm Blade and I'm cutting. Bye. See you next time.